Hello everyone, Reza here. In this video, I will show you how to build a responsive navigation menu experience in Canvas Power Apps. The same navigation control will work as a top nav in a mobile device experience and will work as a left navigation in a tablet or a browser experience. We will build this with very simple steps in a matter of few minutes. Let's check it out in action. Let's begin with creating a responsive power app on make.powerapps.com on the home screen experience. I will start with a page design and I will start with a page design called sidebar. So I'll select this. This creates an app with a screen that uses the sidebar layout experience. This screen comes with the screen container, which includes a header and a bottom container that includes two containers, a sidebar container and a main container. Now we are trying to build a responsive navigation menu experience. That is something I would like to place in this sidebar container. The screen that got created with these containers, if you want to build it directly in your power app, we go to new screen and pick the sidebar layout and it will create another screen that includes that same combination of containers. Now the first screen of mine, I will rename it to my home screen. If I preview this, I'm currently viewing this on a desktop experience. If I view this on a mobile experience held vertically, you can see how both those containers are wrapping. If I change the orientation of the mobile device to horizontal, there is enough real estate to fit the two. So they are being placed next to each other. Now this sidebar container has a flexible width property that is turned on. The fill portion is set to three out of 10, meaning it will take 30% of the real estate available for the width of the bottom container. Now I would like to define a fixed width for my sidebar container. So I can turn the flexible width off and for the width property of the sidebar container, I'll give it a defined width of let's say 200. Now if I preview, you can see it's taking my defined width, but if I view this on a mobile experience, the sidebar container moves to the top and here there is a white space. And this is something that I want to avoid. To do that, for the sidebar containers with property, I will use the following formula. If the name of my screen, which is called home screen in my case, dot size, the size property gives out a numerical value depending upon the type of the device. For a mobile device held vertically, the screen size property will result in a number one. So I want to check to see if the screen size is equal to one. If yes, then you set the width of the sidebar container as parent dot width. Else you set the width to the fixed width of 200. Now, if I preview, if I go to a mobile device held vertically, you can see how the sidebar container takes the full width. The height here is a lot. It's taking 50% of the real estate. The sidebar container has a property called alignment in container. By default, it's set to align in container dot stretch. Let's change this as well based on the size of the screen. If home screen dot size is equal to one, then you use align in container dot start else you use align in container dot stretch and the sidebar container has a property called height 
it's set to 200. I will change this to let's say 75. Now if I preview, you can see how it's taking the height 75 and the alignment is at the start. If I change the orientation, there's enough real estate to fit the two, takes the defined width. Back to mobile device held vertically. Notice there is a white space here. For the main container, there is a property called minimum height. Let's change this to parent dot height. Let's preview. There we go. This is my sidebar container. This is my main container. Let's change the orientation. The sidebar sits on the left. Main container sits on the right. Next, let's go ahead and build our navigation menu control. And for that, I will leverage a modern control. To enable modern controls, we'll go to the three ellipses, settings, under general, we have modern controls and themes. I'll go ahead and turn this on. If I look at the insert tab, now we have modern controls as well. In the header container, let's go ahead and insert the modern header control. And in the sidebar container is where I will go and insert the tab list control, which is generally available. I will set alignment in container to stretch and flexible height to on. Minimum width, the property is called layout min width. I will set this to parent dot width. The tab list control has a property called alignment. Currently it's horizontal. So the items are being stacked horizontally. I can change this to vertical so we can see how the items are being stacked vertically. And alignment is the property that I would like to change depending upon the size of my screen. If my screen dot size is equal to one, then tab list dot alignment should be horizontal else vertical. If I preview the app on a mobile device held vertically, you can see how the tab list style is horizontal. If I change the orientation, that container sits on the left, the navigation menu, which is my tab list control becomes vertical. If you notice the tab list control selected item sticking very close to the border of this container. So what we can do for the sidebar container, let's give it some padding. I'll give it a left padding of five. I'll also give it a right padding of five. And for the tab list controls, layout min width property, I will use parent dot width minus 10. So now we can see that the selected item is highlighted very clearly and there is some padding from the left hand side. Now all we have to do is set the items for the tab list control. Currently it's hard coded to this array. Let's change this. The value for the items property, I would like to set it as a global variable. On the app object, we have a new feature which is generally available called formulas. This is where we can create something known as named formulas. So I'll go ahead and create my menu data right here. I'll say menu data is equal to, I'll create an array. In this array, I'll create objects. First thing I want is the title of my menu. So I'll call this menu title home comma I'll create another property in this object called go to screen meaning which screen should it navigate to if that menu item is selected I'll give the context of my home screen I'll put a semicolon at the end that completes my 
named formula called menu data. I'll select my tab list and set the items property to that named formula, which is menu data. For the tab list, we have the fields property. I'll go to edit, add field, and choose the field that we would like to display here. I'll pick menu title, add. So it shows the name of my menu title. Now the tab list has a property called on select. When an item in this is selected, I would like to navigate the user to that specific screen. Self dot selected dot the property go to screen. And the tab list has a property called default selected items. This I will use the function lookup in my menu data named formula where the go to screen is equal to app dot active screen. App dot active screen gives me the current screen that is active in the app. That completes my setup. Now this home screen is currently like my template screen. So if I need to create other screens in my app, I can simply duplicate the screen and start building my other screens. For example, this is my task screen. I'll duplicate the home screen again, information screen. Now that I have my screens defined, my responsive navbar in place, I can start adding controls to my main container. Our focus though is on the responsive navbar. The data for that is coming from the named formula. Currently it has an entry for one item, my home screen. I'll put a comma and add a second item. I'll call it task and the go to screen will be my task screen. And then I'll create a third item called info and my go to screen will be my information screen. Now, if I preview, I'm on the home screen. I'm on the task screen. I'm on the information screen. You can see how I'm navigating through my different screens. Let's change the orientation. Now it's a left navigation experience. And the same experience will work on my desktop experience or on the tablet experience in different orientations. And I've taken the same model and applied to one of my apps. Once again, I have that same concept defined for my navigation. The data is coming from my named formula. To add some character to the nav bar, I've added emojis desktop experience on my home screen. Let's go to the my ticket screen. Let's go to the overdue ticket screen or take me to the information screen. Let's change this to a mobile form factor. You can see how the navigation changed to a horizontal nav experience. There's not enough real estate to fit all the items. The tab list control automatically provides three ellipses. If you select that, it will show me the other options that I can choose from.